evening. My name is Palma Accardi, and you are watching Title Flooding Talk. We are brought to you by the New Jersey Coastal Coalition and filmed live every Sunday night here at the Irish Pub in Atlantic City. And I'm meteorologist Dan Skelton. Thanks for being with us on this Sunday evening. Pretty nice weekend weather-wise. Finally keeping the rain away. And, of course, uh, we're kind of asking our guests to come in on a nice weather day. I appreciate our guests doing that. Vince Jones, Atlantic County Emergency Management Director. Vince, thanks for being here. Thank you, no problem. Appreciate you coming down. How are you? Dining at the Irish Pub with your wife. Absolutely. So thank you for coming down and spending some of your weekend with us. First time guest, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, like you said, I'm the Emergency Management Director for Atlantic County. I've been with the county 21 years. Prior to that, I was in Municipal uh, Emergency Management and that's been my career and, and I enjoy it, I love it. Um, you know, we get to deal a little bit with the weather, uh, you know, other emergencies, but uh, the weather by far is probably the most, uh, as you know, unpredictable and uh, challenging and in fun at times. And it's, of course, how we've spent a lot of our time together. Absolutely. Uh, for, from forecasting storms and dealing with storms. And it's been quiet lately, but it's, you know, when, when we first started working together, it wasn't so quiet back in the early, uh, earlier this decade. Yeah, no, we had, uh, yeah, we did. We had some pretty significant storms that impacted the areas, you know, um, and, and a lot of challenges that we were able to overcome. Like you said, though, it was, I think, the relationship that we had helped a lot because we were able to get the message out to folks, you know, what they should do, how they should prepare, what they needed to do, uh, any warnings that, uh, that were issued, that you had issued, you know, the people... He did listen to it, and I think that helped us, and, and, and actually, I think, saved a lot of lives, too. Now, you've been with the county for 21 years. What are some of your responsibilities, and how have things changed in those last 20 years? Well, th I can tell you, things dramatically changed uh, over the years. A lot of things changed due to, to weather, due to some of the storms that we've had, you know, two hurricanes, Irene, Sandy. 9-11 uh, obviously really changed uh, how emergency management was looked at, what things that we did. You know, we always dealt with emergencies, we always responded to incidents and events, uh, tried to help manage them at the local level or even at the county level, and, you know, try to bring life back to normal, so to speak. After so you these, actually these, are dealing with more than just weather emergencies. Absolutely, absolutely. We do a lot of planning. Uh, our office is, is tasked with doing planning on a countywide basis, not only to protect the visitors, the residents of Atlantic County, uh, but also the emergency services that provide those emergency, uh, whether it's a fire, whether it's a police, uh, local emergency medical services. We have to make sure that they have the equipment, they have the ability to go out and respond. Uh, and when you talk about weather type conditions, they rely on us, they rely on folks like Dan. You know, they're out there in harm's way. What are they looking at? What are they going to be faced with? What are the challenges that they're going to have, you know, when they're going into these uh, events? You, you have a, you, you've got a pretty large county and kind of meteorologically and geographically diverse county. So you have the Pinelands where you can deal with forest fires. Of course, uh, June 2012, you had, you had something we never heard of before, a derecho, which Absolutely. kind of devastated the whole county. You've got tidal flooding, hurricanes, nor'easters along the shore. So, so I mean, it's, it's a large area with a lot of things that can happen. And that's one of the things I don't, a lot of people, a lot of residents that live here don't realize, like you said, how diverse Atlanta County is where we could have, you know, everything from the coastal flooding uh, along the Barrier Islands, Atlantic City, to Longport, Margate, Ventnor. Then you start moving inland, you get the challenges there with the flooding, you know, Route 322, Route 30. And then you go out towards Hamilton, and when we start talking about snow, you know, we can go from two to four inches of snow along the coast, you can have upwards of a foot of snow in Hamilton. Right. You know, so it is it's absolutely diverse. Uh, again, the challenges with the first responders, we, you know, you have to make sure that, you know, whatever weather and what we're doing along the coast, that might not be the same challenges or the same things that we have to articulate to them when you start moving towards Mullica, Hamilton, and out towards Buna. Things are going to be different out there. Now, obviously there's a lot of moving parts and factors with emergency management. What is the communication like among the state, the emergency personnel, the county, and even local municipalities? How does that function? I think the good thing for us is that it occurs almost every day, daily, the communication. Uh, we get different reports from the state that come through our office that we push out to the local emergency management coordinators, the local emergency responders. 
uh, the training that takes place on a daily basis at, out at our office uh, that allows them to come and interact and the network and we've said this from the very beginning when I first came to the county and even when I first got involved with emergency services there's nothing better than the networking that takes place whether you're at training whether you're at a conference uh, even when you're out on the scene of an incident you could be able to put a name to a face be able to, to realize what individuals have what their abilities are uh, even their shortfalls and how we can overcome some of those shortfalls and be able to handle it the next time we have a situation handle it even better and that was the case when you know you look at when we dealt with Irene to Sandy you know, things that went right things that went wrong and how we handled it you know the next time so to speak so now, it was really good now part of like my job is forecasting your job of course is is taking that forecast and implementing the decisions you think are best for the residents evacuations so on and so forth how was the Irene to Sandy, um, you know, um, challenge? How the Irene to Sandy kind of differences? For instance, Irene was supposed to be bad. We kind of got off easy. Sandy, therefore, maybe was underestimated by some residents. Kind of the old thing where everyone thinks the next storm is going to be like the last storm. So, so how do you how do you communicate that? Like the the differences that happen from one storm to the next, the, the challenges that. You know, everyone should treat this, each storm as its own kind of being. Like, like, how is that? How is the Irene to Sandy in your office um, met the challenges? Apologize for the jumble. No, no, that's, and that, but that is a good. I, I, I was fortunate enough. I was able to go out and speak to a group um, of seniors just last week, and and that was one of the things that we talked about. They said, you know, it's got to be hard for you to take, like you said, a forecast and try to relay that to the people and then you know tell us what we should be doing the hardest thing with our job is is just that is getting people engaged getting people to listen getting people to prepare and i tried to tell them that if they have a plan and if they know what they're going to do and how they're going to react it's that much less that i have to worry about them the going like you said with irene irene was the first time we issued an, a mandatory evacuation order and you know they. I, one of the questions they asked me was, you know, how do you quote draw that line in the sand? Right. And you guys, you guys use Route Nine. We use Route store, Nine, right? but, it, but it's tough to draw a line, right? Exactly. I mean, if, you know, where where do you say, okay, everybody on this side got to get away from that wall of water so you don't drown? Uh, and one of the pe one of the questions that I had was uh, from two individuals there who happened to live across the street from each other in Route Nine, and she said <laughs> I packed up and left, and he laughed and said I was watching her drive off and wondering, hey, how's he going to get that water to stop in the middle of the road right. and not come onto my property? And, you know, it's those challenges, it's those things that we have to deal with and we have to overcome. One of the one of the things that, uh, when I said, you know, I was talking about lessons learned and, and things that we have to our takeaway, some of the failures, and I, and I will admit it, some of the failures that we had in Irene was for sheltering and the evacuation when it came to transporting and moving the people. We had a plan, the plan was executed. Unfortunately, the magnitude and the amount of people that did did heed the warning and left, uh, we weren't prepared for that many people. We immediately addressed it, got the people on, on buses, and it was the location of the shelters trying to shelter everyone that evacuated. We actually were overcome by evacuees. When we fast forward to Sandy, one of the things that we did immediately after Irene was to fix that. We, we can't just say, well, it won't happen again, and you know, maybe it won't be that bad the next time. We have to immediately sit down and say, okay, this plan failed. We got to change it, and we did. And with Sandy, uh, and even moving forward, our residents aren't going to be bussed all over the state of New Jersey. They're going to stay within the county. We're going to make sure that they're safe. Uh, it might not be the most pristine conditions. It's not going to be like going to a motel and staying overnight. But we're going to get them out of harm's way, and we're going to keep them in the county so they can return back home. And that's one good thing that comes with storms. I mean, because you can have plans, but until they are implemented and you see the strengths and weaknesses, absolutely. I mean, the one good thing is it makes your response to the next storm better. Yeah, absolutely. And Sandy, Sandy was tough. I mean, you and I had conversations where. You know, this storm's really going to make a hard hook right. to the left, you know, when you're looking at it on the map. I, I, people still doubted that. And I think that was a lot of the reasons why people didn't leave is, you know, you're looking at this and you're going, there's no way. There's no way that this storm's going to do what they're saying it's going to do, when in fact it did, and it caught a lot of people off guard. Now, how do you determine, okay, we definitely need to call an emergency evacuation, and how much time ahead does normally get 
Well, for a hurricane, let's say. And a lot of people ask that. They say, how, you know, how do you come up or how do you make that decision? And it's not, believe me when I say it's not done uh, quickly, it's not done in a vacuum. There's a lot of factors that we have to look at. The biggest factor is the forecast. We need to know where the storm is going to track. When is it going to be close enough to us we're going to start feeling the impacts? What are those impacts? Is it heavy rain? Is it wind? Storm surge? You know, how, what are we looking at when we talk storm surge? How much of that water is going to impact our coastline? Then we have to look at our infrastructure, meaning the roadways. You know, I know during a normal heavy rain what roads are impassable because of flooding. Well, now you take this, this, you know, more than just your normal rainstorm, you're looking at a hurricane, wind-driven rain, uh, water that's being pushed by, by the storm itself, so that lessens our time to have those roads open that they can actually travel across them. So then we start formulating our timeline based on the roads being flooded, based on our shelters being open. And the unfortunate thing is, whether it's Atlanta County, and Dan will tell you whether it's down in the Florida or along the Gulf Coast, um, it's, it's going to be a day like today, beautiful sunny day, people are out on the beach, the last thing they want to hear out of my mouth is it's time to go and you have to leave. But the timing that it takes to move all these people and get them out of harm's way, that's what's going to happen. And you know, it's not an easy decision, it's a decision, believe me, I, you know, we don't look forward to making because there's a lot of risk also that goes into it. Uh, but it's, we've always said it's, it's going to be a nice day and, and our hardest thing, both of us, to try to convince people is they're going to have to leave when it's nice. Because we've seen, uh, we see it every Sunday in the summer when just your weekend tourists are leaving and our roadways are, are jam-packed. Now you have everyone waiting to the last minute on our, on our roadways. They just can't handle it. Plus, you know, South Jersey, especially like say Long Beach Island, and, uh, you know, Cape May County, even Brigantine, one, Brigantine. one way on, one way off. You know, you're gonna have bottlenecks, if, especially if people do, as humans do, wait till the last minute to uh, yeah, to wait. Well, I, I, well, at least I wait. For that. Are you calling me out? No. Uh, so. What are the, I mean, I know there are obvious dangers if you don't heed those warnings, but what are some other things that people might not realize if they don't leave? If they don't leave, again, when we talk about the roads, the, 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 it's going to come to a point where the roads are going to be completely impassable. The road, the water's going to be over top of the roadway, so you don't know what's below that water. You should never, ever drive through or across a flooded roadway. Uh, you've seen some pictures, I, I know people saw where the firefighters were pulling people out of vehicles or police officers were grabbing people, the, the vehicles ended up getting washed away. We don't want that, so that's why we ask people to leave early when they can travel across the roads. But the danger is the roads are going to be closed down. The other concern that we have, um, and, and as a first responder we have to think about it, there's going to come a point where we can't risk those responders going into those, those certain conditions to try to get the people who didn't heed the warning and didn't leave. You know, they're going to be calling 911, they're going, to be, they're going to want somebody to come and get them. But unfortunately, there's a point where it's absolutely too dangerous. And to lose the life of a first responder, to try to get somebody who just didn't leave, you know, it's risk and benefit. And, and we can't we make that, that call, and, and sometimes the risk is too great. And, you know, these people are going to be left. They're going to be left to have to, you know, ride out the storm, so to speak, on their own. Did that happen with Sandy, where... First responders could not get to people? It did. Unfortunately, it happened in Brigantine. Uh, it happened all along the Barrier Island. Uh, and there's a frustration, believe me, there's a frustration. They want to go out. They will it's put their them, instinct, so, it's their I'm instinct. sure. It's exactly, yeah. it's their personality. They're going to want to go and they're going to want to get these folks. But again, they're putting themselves at risk. They're putting others, other first responders that are with them at risk. That's why we try to tell people it's so imperative that they, they leave when they're told to leave. And it's not that like you have to wait till the hurricane passes and then you'll be fine. You may not be able to be gotten to for for days or have right. power for weeks or have uh, you know utilities or whatnot. So it's not just all right. I just got to make it twelve hours while the hurricane's here and that's it. I mean, you may be isolated for a while. Well, like you said, Sandy was a good example of that. Um, you know, the storm came, the storm went. The amount of sand and debris. Broken gas lines, live utility lines, electric lines that were all scattered throughout the Barrier Islands. We couldn't let anybody, and people and people criticized us. You know, I want to go home. I want to check on my home. Why won't you let me 
we couldn't. It was unsafe conditions. It was unsafe, again, for even the first responders. Trying to remove that debris, I mean, not, you know, inches of sand, there were feet. The sand was, was several feet deep in some areas, especially in Longport, that you just, you had to move the sand in order to even get to check the homes. We had to go in and check the homes. You know, you make sure the utilities were shut off, that the gas lines that were leaking uh, in a home, in a residence, were, you know, taken care of and addressed before we could and put people back in there. who ended up moving all the sand and debris? Was it the local municipalities that had to work that out, or was there... It was the local, our local municipalities, public works departments, and also assistance. You talked about, you know, uh, emergency management and, and the state and, and how the counties interact with each other. And like I said, it's those relationships. Um, the seven southern counties, as Dan knows down here, were, were a tight-knit group, almost a, like a family. Um, I knew that we did not have the ability to move that much sand to be able to do what we had to do. Uh, I reached out to my counterparts in Cumberland, in Camden County, Burlington County, and Cam uh, Camden County Public Works Department. The County Public Works actually came in and assisted the borough of Longport moving that sand so we can get the roadways open and we can get the gas company and the utility companies in there to make safe those houses so the people could return. And, and as bad as Sandy was, um, you know, we, we do have to remember that it was much worse to our north. In fact, yeah. our worst case scenario is taking, you know, what happened in Sandy and Atlantic and Cape May County, adding a foot or two of water to that, and then taking the winds of the derecho and adding that on top because the wind in Sandy wasn't bad. It wasn't. Uh, you know, You're absolutely right. 60, 70 miles an hour winds in a derecho. Our friend Jim Everyone, I know, <laughs> he estimates, you know, over 100 miles per hour winds. And that was for 10, 15 minutes. A hurricane will have him for a couple of hours. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, our worst case scenario is actually 2012's two worst events coming combined together. into one. You're absolutely right. Are you absolutely. ready for something like that now? Uh, <laughs> we, as ready well, as you as can as be. As ready, exactly. We're as ready as we can be. Again, we have plans to address it. Um, we have the staff, and, and again, we have the resources, and we have those relationships again. Uh, if it happens, we're going to respond, we'll address it. I hope it never happens again. Like you said, I had no idea what that was right. that night. Uh, personally, I, I thought we did have a tornado come through you know, the first area that I was able to get to, and then I was talking to some of the, my staff, and then they, they were miles away from me and telling me that they were experiencing the same damage and looking at the same damage. I said, that was either one big tornado or multiple tornadoes, and it wasn't until we contacted the weather service that they threw that name out, and I'll, I'll never forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever hear of that name before? Absolutely not. Now, do you think it was a coincidence that such major storms occurred in that time period? So it, it was an unfortunate connected? coincidence, yeah, okay. absolutely. I, I mean, it's with Vince in the county and everyone, all my emergency managers and meteorologists were tested often from like 2011 to oh, wait, about wait. 2016, up to about Jonas, right, yeah. with the massive tidal flooding that brought. Yep. And, and the snow and the slush and everything else. I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that Vince and I actually traveled to New Orleans together right. to relay our experiences uh, from Sandy to the National Hurricane Conference, which was a great experience. It was, bourbon, not, and not just Bourbon Street, you know. Uh, <laughs> we did some work while we were down there too, but yeah, we did, it's, absolutely. you know, it's unfortunate that we had to deal with those storms, but it's great that you can kind of impart what you learned and your experiences to, you know, a national platform. And it, and it was, and you're, and you're right, it was, it was actually, it was an honor to go down there and be able to speak to them. And like I said, there, we're, we don't, we're not hiding anything. Um, there was a lot of things that we did right with Irene. There was a lot of things that we did wrong. Again, we fixed them. We made those changes. So when Sandy came, uh, you know, we were better prepared. Not a hundred percent again because we don't know what you know, we don't know what any one storm is actually going to bring us uh, the magnitude, but it's it's being able to look at you know what the possibilities are, looking at the forecast, like I said, and then being able to respond to whatever that outcome is, uh, good or bad, and, and dealing with it. And it was to be able to give that information. Uh, to them, and, and some of the takeaway that we got was talking to others who had, obviously down there, uh, who have gone through Katrina, had gone through some other hurricanes, and it was some, what was interesting, it was similar things. I mean, what, what my frustration, they, was the frustration that they felt. So I knew I wasn't alone, and I, you know, just the way I was feeling, um, and it was, it was a really good time. Well, that's sort of why the New Jersey Coastal Coalition formed in right. the beginning anyway, because 
all of the municipalities were dealing with the same frustrations after Sandy. And it was, it's, it's really and a still are. sharing ideas and, and learning from each other and what works for some towns, other towns pick up. And yeah, it, it's a great uh, sharing of information. And this show is called Tidal Flooding Talk, so we always like to bring it back to Tidal Flooding on occasion as well. How do you think, I mean, and especially recently, let's say since Sandy, you know, how, how do you think the the frequency, the severity, uh, you know, just the overall occurrences of tidal flooding have changed along the Atlanta County shoreline. It's absolutely changed. Uh, you know, you and I were talking earlier, Sandy, Sandy absolutely did something to our coastline. Um, we have areas uh, along, you know, between Egg Harbor Township and Summers Point. We had flooding there in the past, you know, whether it was the full moon and then, of course, you get that nor'easter coming right. up. So we were used to that. but. What we're seeing now is, is areas, you know, really becoming impacted when we have these coastal storms, when we have even just a couple days of heavy rain uh, that, again, we didn't, these, this wasn't the case years before Sandy. Uh, and a lot of the back bay, just, just some changes to, to the, the channels, the sh the channels right, everything. Right. So it, it, it truly carved, if you will, uh, a new path uh, for some flooding that we're seeing now that we didn't see before. Uh, we, you know, we always had flooding, as you know, on along U.S. Route 30 in Afseekin, uh, in Atlantic City, same the Black Horse Pike in West Atlantic City. But those roads are flooding a lot earlier now, which is a cause for concern for us because we're going to lose those roads. They're not going to be passable. Uh, so that, again, like that timeline I was talking about, that lessens that time to be able to move people safely. So the flooding is absolutely uh, a concern. Well, how do we? What do we do to mitigate it? Uh, you were saying with the Coastal Coalition, that's what we—they're looking at. That's what we're looking at with them. Is you know, are there things that maybe we can do to try to, to lessen that impact? Maybe delay the, the roads from flooding a little bit. You know, do we look at the elevation of the bulkheads? Do we look at the elevation of the roadways? Maybe. So there, there are things that are in play right now. It's being addressed, and I know a lot of people don't. You know, they think we just sit back and wait for a storm to come, and then we'll, we'll address it or we'll deal with it when it's happening. We're doing it way in advance of a storm coming. We're trying to address these things. Now, what are some ways that even just residents can do to prepare for a storm? What we tell we tell every resident, even visitors, is you know, like Dan was saying earlier, it depends on where you live. You know, if you live in Margate or Ventnor or even in Summers Point, if you live, you know, close to the coast, you got to keep an eye to the ocean. You know, you're going to have coastal flooding. You're going to have uh, storms, coastal storms that are going to come up. They're going to impact you. What that impact is, it, it depends, again, on the magnitude of the storm. So you have to listen to the forecast as we tell them. You, know, you can listen to us, but we're listening to them. You need to listen to them. If they tell you the forecast is going to be bad, it's going to be flooding, chances are they're right, and you have to, you know, you have to act accordingly. Um, and as you move further inland, again, conditions are going to be a little bit different. You know, Atlantic County's got two pretty good-sized rivers that run right through it, the Great Egg Harbor River and the Mullica River. And we've had, as you know, we've had flooding along both of those, uh, some significant flooding. So, you know, we have to look at the people that live in Mays Landing, in Hamilton Township, Egg Harbor Township, Mullica. they got to keep an eye on the river where the people in Ventnor might not be too concerned with the river. So it depends on where you're living. You need to be cognizant of, of what can happen in your neighborhood, uh, and, then, and then again, take those those precautions. You know, our office is always available to help if they if people want to know, uh, if they want information, they can go to the web page. You know, there's so much out there. FEMA's web page has a ton of information. And the, you know, local Red Cross. There's just there's so much information out there, and we tell people, you know, you're the master of your own destiny. So get the information, make your own decisions. I, you know, a lot of people call and say, well, what do you think I should do? I can't make those, build those decisions for them. Because, again, I don't know how many family members are in the house. Do you have pets? That's going to impact an evacuation, too, if they have pets. You know, where are you taking your pets? So every household is going to have their own needs. Their own plan. We tell everybody, you have to have your own individual plan that meets your needs. Has your job become easier or more difficult in the, in the changing world of communication now? Before um, you know, you issue a press release, or, or there'd be a statement that you'd be you'd be an interview on TV or in the newspaper. You know, now with social media and all these different platforms, uh, you know, is it is it a easier way to spread information and reach more people, or uh, because of the ease of information being shared, 
do you have a lot of misinformation being shared? Is it more work for your office, or is it, so, is it a little combination of both? Well, social media absolutely changed the way we disseminate uh, information in emergency management. I mean, I'm, I still get criticized because I'm old school, uh, you know, the fax machine. I, I still, you know, we were sending out the fax, like you said, try to get in front of a radio, try to get in front of a camera. That was our way of getting information out. Social media absolutely changed it. Some can say it changed it for the better. Some can argue and say, well, the, the problem with social media is there's so much information out there now that people are getting just bombarded and blitzed with information. So what's that right piece of information that they should take away? Again, me being kind of old, that's my concern is that somebody's going to miss the message or, like you said, misinformation's out there because... As we know, there's stuff that's posted, stuff that, that's tweeted out there. Well, I think, I think every single hurricane or Easter brings a shark into the streets of Atlantic City, right? I mean, that, that, that every that same storm, picture, yeah. Right, that same picture, yeah. So yeah. It, does, it does spread misinformation. Yes, you guys got to weed through that. So I always say, um, you know, find your reliable source, whether yes. it's for weather. And obviously, yes. Atlantic County, there's no more reliable source for emergency management information than the county emergency management office. So find your source and stick with that. And or, or multiple sources, but yeah. they do have to be reliable. They have to absolutely be reliable, and, and you know that's a lot of people that are uh, really starting to use social media, if you will, uh, to keep track of what's happening, emergencies and weather and stuff. Like Dan said, that's the key. They have to get reliable information, accurate information, and the latest they, and the latest information. Yeah. Absolutely, uh, it's imperative. I mean, and I, you know, going back, and I, and I got to give him credit. Going back to that derecho that night, um, you know, I, I was. Watching the news, and when he signed off, he you know he kept telling people, you know, he's got some storm. Keep an eye; these storms coming through, and it wasn't. I don't think a half hour, forty minutes after that, I never saw a purplish orange type sky like I saw that night. Uh, it was scary. It was the scariest weather it I was ever scary. saw. And you know, it's not a made-up word, but it, it was a new word to our vocabulary. Yes, and yes, it was. And you know, I mean, Sandy uh, taught us a hurricane can make left turns, and in the late October when the ocean's fifty something degrees. Even to New degrees, Jersey. Made a left turn. Yes. Make, yeah, left turns are not popular in New Jersey, <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> made a left turn right in New Jersey. Yeah. And you know, I mean, our vulnerabilities. I, I think we had a little bit of a kind of sense of full security yes. because we hadn't had a hurricane in a while. We had never had a countywide derecho. Um, yeah. You know, now I think everyone who has been here since that time knows we are vulnerable now. Knows there isn't a bubble over South Jersey anymore. You're right, and I, and I hate to say that, you know, sometimes it takes something like that to change people, but I've talked to uh, dozens of people who made the decision to stay back with Sandy, try to ride it out, and they've said to me, to, you know, they will never, ever make that wrong decision again. They said, when you say it's time to go, we're going to go, because they said it was the scariest thing that they've ever had to go through, and a lot of them didn't know if they were even going to make it through that night. Uh, they said when the water started coming in, and you know, getting into the first floor living area, and they started to go up their stairs, and they were watching the water come as they were climbing the stairs. The water was coming up each stair, uh, getting closer and closer to their second floor. That was enough that it scared them. They said, "Next time they say you know, leave, we're going to leave." So it was scary. You're powerless at that point. That's right. Absolutely. Literally Absolutely. powerless. And We've been watching Title Flooding Talk, brought to you by the New Jersey Coastal Coalition. Our guest this week is Atlanta County Emergency Management Director Vince Jones. Vince, how can people reach out to your office with any any questions or uh, you know to get any information? What's the best way to reach out to you guys? If they need information, uh, regardless of whether it's weather-related information, whether it's that you know what kind of kit or what kind of plan they have for their house, uh, or even if it's information relevant to their local emergency management office. They can contact us at 609-407-6742, and we will send out that information to them. They can also go to our webpage at www.aclink.org and click on the Emergency Preparedness link. And again, all the information there, there's other links, uh, there's weather information there. And, uh, you know, again, we tell people if they're prepared, that lets us be able to be prepared to help others. Now, do we have any uh, before we close uh, No the show, Facebook any? questions. Lots of hellos to, to Vince, to Palma, to, to myself, uh, Kristen Kaiser, uh, Betty and Morgan Whip. Nice to have you guys on. Uh, 
Uh, Peter Griffin, uh, hi to you. Scott Griffith, Maria Affinetti, nice to have you guys on too. Hope you guys are all enjoying the nice weather weekend. I mean, Vince loves these, right? I these, love it. He's nice, quiet. Um, it's great. This is kind of the time of year where we're past nor'easter season. We're not in hurricane season yet, so you know it's usually a quiet time for you, right? Yeah, but you had said it earlier. Again, we we there's each year, each month brings something, right. uh, but we are, you know, again, we're still. Forest fires, you know, are still prevalent right now. Still, even though the trees are greening up, uh, when that ground floor, you know, starts to starts to heat up, uh, and again, anything, you know, we're in coming up on the hurricane season soon, a few weeks away, so it can happen at any time. I mean, we've even had some hurricanes, which was interesting, uh, even earlier before the season started, and even a couple that went. It'll be yes. on the season, so yeah, it's a real it's a year-round threat. And, yeah, it is. And like you guys right. said, it, like you said, it's a year-round. I mean, you, you don't have any time off. You're always preparing. You're always planning. You're always working and training too. I mean, the other thing is we just don't. We we're constantly in a classroom like anyone else. Uh, you know, we got to stay sharp, and we got to be able to. In order to help people, we got to keep our skills honed. So we do. We were in. We're taking training classes, whether it's a one-day seminar. Or it could be a two-week, ten-day class that we're sitting in, and, and we continue to learn and you know make improvements. Well, we do thank you for all of your hard work, thank and of you. course for coming out here on Sunday night. Uh, we won't let you go without one of these, though, an Irish pub T-shirt. So next thank time you. you come by, thank you very much. And next time it will be wearing it. Yeah. Vince Jones, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. You know, when much. Vince thank and I you. don't talk, it means the weather's quiet, so hopefully we Good won't weather. be talking <laughs> anytime soon. I hope you have a great summer. Thank Thanks you. for coming. You You're welcome back thank anytime. You. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah. Thanks for being here, guys. Thanks. Have a great weekend. We'll see you back next week with our guest, Scott Evans, I think. Is that next I'm week? I'm not sure. Well, we'll have a great guest lined up, and uh, we'll see you back here next Sunday, 7 p.m. Thank you.